Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back to the Uncle Sharma channel. You know what we're here for. To react to the nil-nil draw, Juventus versus Inter, which means Inter are out of another competition. Champions League, tick. Coppa Italia, tick. So now, you know, I guess everyone's wish is true, coming true now. Focus on the Scudetto. But overall, we lost the tie 2 1 and we lost it in the first leg as we as we expected. You know, we gifted them those two goals, so we gifted them the uh, qualification to the final now, which uh, will probably you know end up winning it. But this Juve team, can I just say, this Juve team are not good, <laughs> they're not good at all. You know, over those two legs, I have not been impressed by them. I've been impressed by the defending, I must say, especially today. The way they managed the game and the way they defended, you know, this is the reason why they've got the best defence in the league right now. You know, Pirlo was supposed to be this, you know, revolutionary coach with like, you know, attacking ideas, dominating play, all this. And turns out he's just a 1960s old school Italian coach with Catenaccio tactics, sit back deep, defend. Even brought Chiellini on the last uh, five minutes to make sure the results goes to five at the back. You know, they 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 were they gave us the chances. To be fair, Lautaro once again, I'm losing I'm, I'm losing words to say on this boy. You know, we make jokes sometimes. I defend him. You know, so I think I feel like he doesn't need defending sometimes. But on games like these, this is where you have to take your half chances. Not your half chances. You know that volley chance he had. That was more than half a chance. You know, it was not easy, but. <laughs> the trajectory of that volley was nowhere near that was going to end up for a, a throw in I think if uh, no one was in the way and uh, you know he had the goal gaping you know Buffon was all the way on the left and he had all the right side of the goal to aim for just don't know don't know what to say with this boy anymore is it, is it a mental thing I don't know is, 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 is this just what he is is this the player he is he's just a bad finisher I don't know um, you just have to hope you know that he, he would age he improves but we need our best players on these big games and once again our big players didn't really turn up today Lukaku good hold up play but you know what we need from him what we've paid you know 65 70 million for him from Man United the goals this is what he has to add extra from Sanchez you know it's nice that he does these nice layoffs good you know battle with the league it was a very interesting battle it was 50-50 but you know, when he gets in front of goal, when he's got, you know, options as well, he is just, I think, you know, it's not spoken about how bad his decision-making is compared to Lautaro as well. He sometimes just shoots straight at the defender. So our two strikers not really turned up, didn't help. And in general, you know, our midfield looks quite interesting. I liked the, the lineup, the midfield, you know, Eriksen, Brozovic, Barella, that might be our most technical midfield that we've put out this season um, it was supposed to be the one against uh, Fiorentina and the Coppa Italia until Sensi got injured there but even in the second half when Sensi came on for Ericsson you know it was pretty technical midfield today but it was just difficult to find space between Juve's line you know they defended very disciplined you know it was very very difficult but you know what, what can I say in terms of man of the match for me I'll give it to Hakimi let me know if you guys agree in the comments below because I felt like he was the one that, especially in the first half, you know, was causing them all sorts of trouble. Alexandro didn't know how to deal with him. And there was maybe, you know, he could have had some better decision making in the final third as we've seen him sometimes. But it's just, you know, in the second half, I was expecting him, you know, to keep pressing at Alexandro, but he didn't quite, you know, he can, he can become a bit predictable, especially 1v1. You just know he's going to go on the outside. He doesn't really, you know, have skill in terms of 1v1 he's very much you know he'll beat you for pace he doesn't seem to have that dribbling close control dribbling that you need in some situations happy to see Damian start on the left and we see you know he's he wasn't you know, like we said you know we're not saying Damian or Perisic you know these are the answers to our left back issues it's just they're okay this they're, they're solid you know he didn't really add much attacking wise um, you know it's not really his position left wing back because he's right footed he's not very left footed but I still prefer him to Young and Young Ashley Young is one of the reasons why we're out of this competition because he gifted them that penalty in the in the first leg in general Brozovic was kind of uh, a bit disappointing as well you know the second match in a row now that he kind of you know he had that first great match against uh, Juventus but now the last one he wasn't very good because he was marked out by Kulusevski this time 
with Ericsson, you know, having that double register almost, you know, sometimes it would be Ericsson coming deep or sometimes it would be Brozovic, who was quite good. You could see that Juve didn't quite know who to go press. Kulusevski was still man-marking Brozovic, but then when Ericsson would come, no one was on him. So that was a good way, good a solution by Conte. But Brozovic still, <laughs> we need we need more from Brozovic. Another, you know, he's supposed to be the vice captain of this team. I don't really see that. Defensively, we were pretty pretty solid, but obviously in the second half, when the space opened up, with Inter tried to attack, the spaces were opening up, being behind. So Ronaldo was getting space on the counter. Uh, I thought Skriniar could have done better in a couple of situations, but Andanovic, we have to give him credit. You know, we criticise him plenty this season, but good saves, Andanovic, good saves on uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to stand if he scored another goal or two against us. And Juve didn't deserve it in the end, you know, Inter had 21 shots, I believe, Juve had 12, but Inter's only three were on target, Juve had four, but yeah, nil-nil I think was the right result on the day, none of the teams particularly deserved to win. Overall, under over the 180 minutes, did we deserve to go through? Probably not, but it gives me confidence, you know, that the gap between Inter and Juve now is almost nothing, you know, you can see we've played three matches, one win, one very convincing win, one loss, not very, you know, convincing loss, you know, that could have been a draw or even a win and this draw, which again, you know, not very particularly convincing. So I am very much, you know, again, confident from these, even though it's not what I wanted, you know, the trophy drought goes on. I was, I was one of the people that wanted to go for this Coppa Italia. I'm happy that Conte went out full out for this. You could see by the way he was on the sideline, by his changes, by the way, you know, we approached this game that we wanted it. But you needed the early goal in the first half, that Lautaro one. You know, it's something had to happen in that first half to, you know, once you get the 1-0, then Juve start to feel the pressure and then you can start doing something. But when you need two goals, Juve, you know, they, the, the credit where it's due, they, they sat back and defended really well. In terms of flop, yeah, it has to be Lautaro, man. Lautaro, you know, <sighs> Google, yeah, I think Lautaro has to have it. Brozovic was also flop of the match for me. But I have to give it to Lautaro. Bastoni improved from the last match. Obviously, you know, that one mistake, you know, can happen. But today you could see he was uh, much improved. Substitutes. Kolarov was decent when, decent when he came on. Nice two, three uh, cross your balls. You know, that's his speciality. Uh, Perisic was okay. Uh, Sensi, yeah, I mean, you can see he's pretty, um, he's pretty, um, you know, rusty. He needs more minutes. I hope Gonte starts to give him more minutes. Um, you know, he had a few misunderstandings with his teammates um you know were not on his wavelength and bad touches but yeah we'll see um you could see we missed a little bit of Vidal's you know his runs into the box and things like that Ericsson was decent but again if you say to me that this was a great Ericsson performance I can show you performances from last season and the start of the season that were similar to this I don't really see much of a difference so I hope you know Conte now has turned the page with this and sees that you know you'd rather have some more quality rather than just having Gagliardini for the sake of it on the pitch but yeah guys let's that's it we go next game very important full focus on the Scudetto now Scudetto or nothing all or nothing Lazio coming up next Sunday big big match obviously come with a preview I'll try to get a Lazio guy on to preview the match with me you guys, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe and comment below who your man of the match was, what you were disappointed by, you know, who your flop of the match was. And yeah, let me know in the comments below. But always, guys, as always, Forza Inter. Ciao.